Now go ahead, call you through to the police emergency. What's the emergency? What's the address of the emergency? The baby girlfriend has a baby. Four to two, what address? That baby, the baby's come out. Go ahead, call what's your emergency, please. There's one phone number everyone knows. Police emergency, how can I help? What's the emergency, please? And last year, it was dialed 31 million times. You just prepare yourself for what could be one of the most traumatic things you're going to hear or one of the most comedy moments that you're going to sit through. Suze, vibrator stuck in anus. These are the people who tune in first to our cries for help. Right, listen, you need to come. Listen, listen to me. They said, you need to listen to me so we can help her. Making decisions that can mean the difference between life and death. We're going to pump the chest hard and fast. One, two, three, four. I just go over the call and think, have I done everything I could have done? Jesus Christ, I think she died. We follow the calls as they are passed to police, fire and ambulance. <laughs> Seeing through their eyes how Britain is changing. Get back, get back. Calm down. Have you taken any drugs at all? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Yeah, it's definitely the Wild West, all right, yeah. Get on your trip. I get to see the side of Britain that no one ever thinks about. Well, I'm looking for a guy with a sofa. You've not seen one, have you? I learnt a lot about what goes on in real life, to be honest. I am Get the truck There are more women working in the emergency services than ever before. Stay where you are. Put your hands behind your back. There's a lot of shouting going on. Do we need the police? Putting themselves in harm's way as they grapple with Britain's problems. Carry on being stupid. You're going to hurt yourself, aren't you? Don't touch me. We're not living in a man's world anymore. Keep yourself walking or I will lock you up. But it's increasingly likely it's other women they'll be dealing with. I'll fucking kill you, old bastard. I would rather deal with a bloke any day of the week than a little female who's kicking off. <coughs> they are like banshees. Don't start behaving like that, young lady. I can't say it. Well, one Come of on. your eyelashes is hanging off. It has almost stopped bleeding, OK. Where have you stabbed him? Excuse me. There's no fear in her eyes, it was just... I'm going to kill you. It's still early evening, but for some in Blackpool, Saturday night is already well underway. Oh dear, mate. Eh? Oh, I've run into a hand there. Could you tell us where Adonis is, please? We're a bit lost. Adonis? Yes. <laughs> Not that I want to go, but there you go. You've got to go along with the cat. I've never heard of that, Adonis. Guys, the police was never heard of the club. 50 years ago, you would find that the majority of women would be married very young. Girls, get off the car! And didn't drink as much as men. But I think they probably do now. I think it's probably equal. But the socialising that they tended to do was with the husband. Oi! Oi! Get her off! Nowadays, women have become more independent and they've got the disposable income to go out with the friends. Am I joking? Thank you. You can't drink on the street. All right. Listen, listen, listen to me. My mum actually went on a hen night in Blackpool. <laughs> She'd never been on a girls' night out in her life. This was her first time. Get her up oh, up for me. And she's never gone again. <laughs> Kate, when are you going to wear your hair down? I'm bored of that one now. Yeah, there's a grass here, yeah. In Blackpool's ambulance control room, staff are waiting for the inevitable influx of calls to begin. Fake. Oh, ambulance service, what's the address of the emergency? Ambulance service. 
Okay, just tell me exactly what's happened, please. This girl's collapsed behind the toilet. We can't get in. She's been sick. She's not moving. Right, has she, has she lost consciousness? Well, yeah, I think so. We can't wake her up or anything. Right, OK. Are you there with her now? She's in the toilet. She's in the toilet? Yeah, she's in the toilet. She's coughed behind the tears. They're falling. We can't open the door. She keeps being sick. Right, we'll make sure she's being sick away from herself. Do you know what? The women are worse than the blokes nowadays, and they get more... more intoxicated than the men. Women have shots lined up, 10 or, 10 or 20 shots lined up, and let's, you know, let's see how fast I can drink them, let's see how, cos that's so hard I am. She's had, um, about four pints of lager. OK. About two Jaeger bombs. I think women try and keep up with men. Women try and drink as much as men, and, and the truth of the matter is they can't. You're expected to do that, and if you don't do it, there's something wrong with you. Emergency. Can, can I have an ambulance, please? Like, right, tell me exactly what's happened. One guy is on the floor, like, and he's been sick, very sick, though. Been very, very sick. Vomiting? Yes. Yeah. Eric Reynolds and Louise Swarbrick are dispatched to the address where the girl has collapsed. Hmm. Why do you think? She, why do you think she's on the floor? A 21-year-old. She might have had a few too many to drink. Do we think? Mm. Or was it a dodgy burger? Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to seem too cynical. <laughs> I'm not saying women shouldn't do what men do because by saying that, then I shouldn't be doing the job that I that I do because it was originally um, a bloke's job. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it if a female does it. It's just as they're drinking like blokes, then they start behaving like them as well. Is it the lady sitting on the floor? Maybe, yeah. Uh, they all look a bit hammered, don't they? <laughs> Hi, yeah. You all right? <laughs> that doesn't look like a panic attack. What's your name, lovey? Shana. Shana. Shana, do you want to come in our ambulance, darling? No. You don't? It's nice and warm in there. We'll have a quick look, look at you. you. And you'll have a bit... I go all for your mummy. And you'll have a bit of privacy on our ambulance, <laughs> won't you? Oh, come on. Shana. What's she had to drink? Yeah. yeah. What's she had to drink? Oh, we keep... I'm sick. Uh, What's happened tonight, Shana? I don't... I'm not... We've just been out, and then... We all met at the takeaway, and then, like, ten minutes later, she's like this. She she's was perfectly fine. So she's intoxicated? We don't, yeah, we've all been drinking, but right. she's never been like this before, apart from once when she had a panic attack. She's not having a panic attack now. I can't say... Well, one of your eyelashes is hanging off. It's yeah. that fake. Just take, get your friend to take them off for you, That'll be, but that's much better. Oh, thanks very now. much. <laughs> I'd like to say that I don't judge. I try not to judge, but it is... It's really difficult. Like, sometimes, although they probably don't understand what I'm saying or probably would forget what I say, I'm like, why, why have you done this? I'm like, like mothers to them all. Why have you got yourself into such a state? Do you not know how dangerous it is? I don't even know what... I don't know what's happened. I'd probably say you've had quite a bit to drink. Yeah, I have had quite a bit to drink. I can, I have, and I probably will, spend a hundred plus, definitely. I'm quite generous when it comes to the shots and that kind of thing. If it's five for a tenner, I'll get ten. Just relax your hand. I'll put it on that one because your nail's missing off of that one. Shots of what? Jager bombs. I oh, love them. I can't drink Sambuca. I used to be able to, but I can't anymore. Um, but Jager bombs. Yeah. They're too cheap. <laughs> I wouldn't go out and leave myself, you know, not being able to pay my bills or not being able to put petrol in my car or anything, which people do, and I don't agree with that. But if I've got spare money, that's what I'll spend it on. I think it's just what people generally do nowadays. They socialise and they, they have a drink with it. I don't think there's any harm in it. Other people might disagree. <laughs> in the past decade, the number of women admitted to hospital after excessive drinking has doubled. They see these female celebrities 
getting drunk, falling out of clubs and having a good time if that's what they're doing and that's what they want and, and they, they try and emulate that on a, a cheaper scale, obviously. I think it's a lot easier now. It's a lot easier to drink. It's a lot easier to drink too much. Is that a good or a bad thing? Well, depends who you ask. I mean... I'm I... asking you. <laughs> it's good for me. My nan would probably have something to say, but... No, she does live in the olden days. Do you think they missed out? Slightly, yeah. You know, if you're told to go home, make tea, look after the kids, wash up and run me a bath, they do it. I'd stick two fingers up and tell them to go somewhere else. <laughs> this is 20-year-old um, Shauna Wilcock. When we got to Shauna, she was sitting on the um, wet pavement with, surrounded by her friends and the police. Um, pseudo panic attack, pseudo vomiting. And the next morning, how did you feel? I don't really suffer with hangovers. I'm quite good. So, I was all right. Driven up to McDonald's, McDonald's breakfast. Back home, back in bed. <laughs> Seriously, just urinated in the street no. in front of these children. No, no you haven't. No. These children have just seen you weeing in the street. You've had your pants down. When I've turned up, I no, I haven't. So go away. Want to give me your details? In the town centre, another Saturday night is drawing to a close. Now, people aren't surprised about what happens. If you see some girl who's outside a pub with a skirt all the way practically up to her neck, who's vomiting everywhere and her mate's holding her hair back, I don't think people are probably surprised. People walk past and laugh. If you were to look around town, yeah, I would say, actually, there's more drunk females with soberish boyfriends because They've probably both gone out to have a good night and alcohol's taken to her more than obviously the man and so he stops drinking and starts looking after his girlfriend. Dearie me, there's one trying to get home. Water bed. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're trying. They just can't put one foot in front of the other. Young, come on. Here we go. young ladies aren't much like young ladies anymore. <laughs> now, girls can basically do anything what they want. Mom, up you get. It's the Spice Girls' fault. <laughs> they started all of this girl power. They're to blame. That's the, if you're looking for somebody to blame, it's the Spice Girls. <laughs> Get back, get back. Stay away. Stay away, stay away. He's already smart, man. I'll push It's 3.30 in the morning, and in Blackpool Town Centre, a fight has broken out. You know what? All I do is put it aside. Yeah, it's, it's my family. family. It's, it's my family. family. Don't let that night. Don't fucking get off me, then. 24-year-old PC Jamie Robinson is first on the scene. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Fuck you, you bastard. I'll fucking kill you, you bastard. <laughs> Yeah, fucking get me arm, you. Yeah, that's how you are, did it? Get me arm. Get me arm. Get me arm. Might as well, aren't you? Because I went to smart like company now. I'm arrested for sticking up for you and my fucking brother. So you two are fucked. I'm going to kill both of you when I get out of this fucking cuffs. I swear to fucking God, I will smash your fucking faces. Pigs. Bacon. Whatever. What's your name? Whatever. All right. I expected that. Yeah, exactly. Expect it, bitch. I think we just expect women to have a little bit more um, decency, but they don't. No. Thank you very fucking much. This is where you're going to be looking to. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 Police assault. Police assault. Oh, dear, assault. Yeah. As I've pulled her away, she, her other arm swung round and she struck me to my chin. You lying bastard. If I'd have struck you in the face, I'd have fucking knocked you out, trust me. I've had harder and bigger than you. 
and I had men, three or four at a time. So trust me, if I struck in the face, I'm not sure. We kind of get the rough end of it. You brush it off, but even the slightest of incident, you always remember them. I can remember incidents that happened five, five years ago, six years ago. They always stay there with you in your mind. In the past decade, there has been a tenfold increase in the number of women arrested for being drunk and disorderly. Can you please ring me up and tell you where to go home? Yeah, it's in the morning, you're worried about your kids, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yeah. Yes, because we're with my so granddad. you weren't worried about them earlier on. Shut the fuck up, right? This was not an argument. This was an argument that happened between my, me and my brother and my husband. And I've just told you. Right, so yes, public. I am. So it's not your argument anymore, oh, is Jesus, it? Jesus, motherfucking Christ. Oh, just take it to this old tenor. Get the fuck off me, right? Don't be silly. When did you decide you wanted to be a cop? When I was about... Actually, when I was about four years old, I remember it. I was in Butlins with my mum and dad, and I entered a little princess competition. And I went up onto the stage and all the other girls wanted to be a nurse or a vet or a princess. And I went up on the stage and I turned around and I said, I want to be a policeman. And was quite upset then when I didn't win because I wasn't all this sort of girly girl look. And uh, yeah, ever since then, I always wanted to do it. Get the fuck off me, right? Because okay. I swear to okay. God, no, when I get out of these handcuffs, I'm going to rip your fucking heads off. Right, get down on your knees. I think my family I like to just pretend that I, I work behind a desk and I have no trouble and I don't go out and deal with big blokes and fight and come face to face with people with knives because then that sort of worries them. Um, but you get used to the adrenaline rush. I could never work in an office, I could never work behind a till um, because you need that sort of adrenaline, you need the fact that when you go into it you don't know what you're going to be dealing with and you sort of live for that. So it'd be boring if everyone was nice to us. Oh, shit. Don't matter what you're wrong, does it? You're like a fucking dad. Oops. Oh, Another female is being brought into custody. Just bring her back here. The 17 year old has been arrested for making threats whilst drunk and disorderly. behaving like that young lady in here all right you're more than fine are you going to answer any of the questions i'm going to ask you yes or no lisa dunn has worked for lancashire constabulary for 10 years promoted a year ago to custody sergeant what have you been drinking tonight vodka cider how much have you had i need to look after you while you're here how much have you had to drink six liters it's rather a lot isn't it have you had anything else other than that cider tonight? No. I went to university, I did a degree in applied psychology, and at the time I kind of wanted to be a bit like Cracker, I suppose. I wanted to be a forensic psychologist. That was my master plan in life. I always wanted to kind of be in the police, so I can't really imagine what else I'd probably do. You need to take some deep breaths, cos you're just winding yourself up at the moment, aren't you? Come on, you'll be OK while you're here. People think we're there just to kind of lock people up, put them in a cell, put them to court or whatever. And there is this perception that, you know, we, we're kind of a bit bad, we're baddies and we don't want to help people. And actually, that isn't the case. And I can think of a girl I've had dealings with. She's uh, 18 now and never really been in trouble before. Got involved with her own group, kept coming in, was a bit of a nightmare. And uh, I got talking to her quite a bit. And then she came to see me on a part four bail. And it was like a different person stood in front of me, just everything about her, her presence, how she dressed, everything. And we had a good old chat, and now she's, like, going to college and stuff. And you sort of think, yeah, that, and that is a bit that I love the most, is knowing that, actually, maybe just that little bit, I might have had a little influence on somebody and being able to do something. And that's definitely the best bit. I think the face of the police force has changed dramatically. It was crazy, actually, how little police women that we had. It was a bit life on Mars. And that was in that was in 2000, you know, really, really recently. When you get more women going out drinking and fighting, it pays to have more female cops on the streets. We have to be the same as the people we're dealing with, otherwise it just wouldn't work. Make sure you take all the vans between street, please. What about Queen Street, please? Yeah. Queen Street, Junction with Abingdon, please. A male has had an altercation with bouncers after being ejected from a club 
and a fight has broken out. PC Claire van der Goss is sent to investigate. Just stay sat down. Stay sat down. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Go, 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 go. Is he your friend? Yeah. 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 All right, just lean against here for me, John. All right. Are you OK? You've got blood on the back of your head, but it stopped bleeding, all right? It, it, it stopped bleeding. Yeah. It's CTV here, because oh, no, 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 no. you're out of audio, bastards. No, listen, not... I'm not telling you now. Colin, Colin, Don't make it worse while I'm here, no, no, please. No, hey, no, 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 no. Go on, Colin. Come on. Colin, job, Colin, right. look you're after good. your mate. Look after Colin. your mate. Don't cause yeah, any more trouble. Don't, don't. All ladies have got a little bit more of a card to play, haven't we, in the town centre? Because if I get to a fight, I'll choose the biggest bloke out of the group. Kind of still in the understanding that you don't hit women. I usually put them up against the wall and say, you're bigger than me, don't hit me. And they don't, which is good, and that'll defuse the situation. Whereas if you get a big burly copper doing the same, well, the gloves are off, aren't they? I'm sorry, Pat. Are you all right? You're all right. You're mad, aren't you? And I'm, I'm here sorry, to, darling. I'm here to sort it for you, and that's Please. exactly what I'm going to do. Please, Pat. All right, yeah, I will. I'm not quite as scared for my health as I think some colleagues, male colleagues, would be. Just because of the reaction I get and my other females get from members of the public. It's definitely different. What's your name? Right. Claire. Claire. What's your husband look like? He's a big rugby player, my husband. Yeah, yeah he's a nice really? guy. Yeah. I think lipstick's more effective than a taser. Definitely. Bit of Revlon. Bit of Estee Lauder now and then. Never did anybody any harm. He's a nice guy. No, I'm a good guy, aren't Just I? sit here no, for a second. No, okay. 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 Just updating my lip gloss, more importantly. Oh dear. Right. Sorry. I've been a police officer for 11 years. I joined in 2001 when I was coming up 21. And it's all I'd ever wanted to do. I don't know why. I never really had any visions of doing anything else but that. I've always been really outgoing, extrovert. I am only little, but I've never, ever let that stand in my way. If I want to do something, I'll do it. Yeah, it's actually back... Reports have been received of a man acting suspiciously in a residential back street. PC Becky Herbert is dispatched to investigate. I think it did surprise some people, just because of the height thing. They were like, do you not have to be so tall to be in the police? How tall are you? If I said I was five foot, I'd be lying. I'm just a bit under. <laughs> so, five foot. There's somebody behind that car. I always find that it works to my advantage. If you're going into a violent situation, people will look at me and just think, I'm not really going to get any bravado or any credit for, for, for hitting her or trying to struggle with her. You all right, mate? Yeah. What are you doing? Um, chilling out. Chilling out? Just because of the, the situation I've found you in, yeah? And that you're behind the car and you sat down with your hood up, I'm going to give you a quick search, all right? All right. Have you been sick on yourself there? Stand up for us. What, what's that on you? Is it dust? What is it? What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick search. Are you happy with me searching with you, or would you prefer a male to come and search you? It's up to you. No, it's up to you. Do you want me to search you? Is that all right? Right. Have you got anything in here that's going to cause you any trouble if I find it? It's horrible. It's like you'll stand there and you'll I'll, I'll say, are you happy for a female officer to search you? And then they'll go, you can search me anytime, sweetheart. And I'm just like, you can feel sick just coming up in your throat a little bit. No, don't tack it off. I don't want a strip tease. This is the most fun I've had in the boat. Ten minutes? Two, three years. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Oh, that's brilliant. You're really pretty as well. They've got the beer goggles on. You could look like anything. You've got a uniform on and they think it's funny. That's it. <laughs> I bet you think I'm really stupid, don't you? I don't, know. I'll tell you what. Go on. If I met you in a bar somewhere... Yeah. You, you wouldn't know no different, would you? No well, different from what? I was what? on the floor, like, being sick and that. I won't go home at night thinking... Oh, that bloke I searched thought I was really pretty. Why did you search me? I told you why, and if you can't remember, it's written down. I don't fancy it at all now, Unfo unfortunately. Yeah. I'm trying to be nice to you. 
think I've only ever arrested two people that were good looking in six years and I've probably arrested about two, three hundred people, something like that. So that says a lot. She lives two minutes away from the hospital. Right, well, we don't come from the hospital. Those vehicles are up well, and down all day long. Where does the ambulance come from? Wherever is available. Well, from, from Deepdale. Right, from the listen. Fucking, from the main ambulance centre. It doesn't. It's on the road all day long in emergencies. In Lancashire's ambulance control room, a male caller is becoming increasingly demanding. Where, where is it? If it's not in the hospital, it's not in the main right, ambulance. Listen. Where is it? You continue. Where is it? You continue. No, you fucking listen to me, you stupid cunts. Do not fucking right, pass your listen details to, me. to the police, all right? I'm not, not going to yeah. put up with this abuse and I'm not going to listen to you number, speaking to me right now. slag, shut the fuck up, right, please. Okay, fucking dick. Call, put you on a fucking bar. Not listening to that. I refuse to so listen to that. Report. I wouldn't like to repeat some of the things I've been called and some of the things I've been asked. I'm regularly a C next Tuesday. Um, bastard. Bitch. And they're the pleasant ones. There's a certain category of blokes on this planet that feel intimidated by women and will not want to let a female deal with their complaint. A group of men have been repeatedly calling police from the emergency phone outside Blackpool Central Police Station. PC Lisa Evans investigates. Are you needing the police? Listen, what you need to do is... Okay. Well, you're at a police station, on the phone to the police. Do you need the police? Yeah. What do you need the police for? A lift home. A lift home. Does it look like I have police written on my car or taxi? No, right, it doesn't, does it? So, go on. Don't push. I'm not pushing you, I'm, I'm guiding you. Come on, that. let's go. You don't have to do that. Don't touch me. Right, goodbye. I didn't shout at you. No, I didn't shout at you. No, I didn't. Stop swearing at me, right? Under arrest for oh, drunk and disorderly. You don't have to say anything, but it may be defensive if you do not mention one question. Something which will later on in court. Anything you do, you say it may be given in evidence. Right. I don't think he expected the outcome to be that. I think he just pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. I'll tell you what, I'll fucking kick off in a minute. I'm telling you. Why are you going to kick off? Hey? You're going to kick off about? Stop being. Hang on, Lisa, turn him around, we'll take him backwards. His male ego took over and he didn't like the fact that two women were dealing with him. And I think the more the situation went on as well, the more he got angry that it was us two that were dealing with him, so he tried to kick off with us more. Um, but I think overall we uh, handled him quite well. Stop being... Right. Get me in. What are you doing? Carry on being stupid. You're going to hurt yourself, aren't you? Now you can walk through like an adult, or we'll carry you through. It's quite good, really, when you've got somebody in a cuff and they think, oh, I can have her. And then when they're in the prone position on the floor, they're suddenly eating the gravel, realising, no, they can't take me, actually. He's been asked to leave, which he's told us all to fuck off. No. He's been walked to the end of the car park again, asked to leave, and on three occasions he's told the police yeah. to fuck off. No. He's been arrested for D&D. I think if you haven't got the confidence or if you're not quite a, an abrupt kind of character, you know, you don't mind a bit of conflict, you're quite a hard-faced person, then I don't think that the job's for you. If, you. if you're a pushover or you're a bit of a softie, you've definitely got to be some kind of bitch. There you go. Right. Enjoy your night at the suite. See you later. That's right, off we go. Where are we going? 16. Do you get that from someone? Is your mum like that? No, my mum is the complete opposite. She doesn't know where I've got what I'm like from. She's the complete opposite, my mum. She's very laid back, doesn't like an argument, would hate to get in any conflict with anybody. So she definitely, she would make a crap police officer. <laughs> She'd let everybody free. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you'd mess with my gran, to be honest. Yeah, I wouldn't have messed with my gran. So, she's an ex, she was an ex-magistrate, my gran. So, she definitely wouldn't have taken fools lightly either. <laughs> maybe you got it from her. Yeah, maybe. Who's assaulted you? Is it domestic? 
violence. Is she your boyfriend? Not even related to me. Sorry? She's not even related to me. Oh, it's another, it's another girl that's assaulted you. Is that what you're saying? You've been assaulted by another girl? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What's the problem there, please? Um, we've got a girl starting trouble, kicking off with another girl, she just smacked someone in the face. So a girl has hit someone in the face? Uh, yeah. In the past ten years, the number of women convicted of violent crime has risen by 80%. Your girlfriend's just been glassed by another girl. Your girlfriend's just been glassed. Does she need an ambulance? Please. Yes, please. Yeah, okay. Pamela Mullen and Peter Byram make to the street where the girls have been attacked. By the time they arrive, the attacker has fled, but two victims are left behind, both with injuries to the head and face. So what's actually happened? So she's actually grabbed you on the face. It's not a lack that's open, it's more of a puncture. Where her nail's gone into her skin. I would rather go and deal with two men fighting than two women. Women don't stop. They will just keep on going and going. She did not care what she did to someone. She was poking her fingers and our eyeballs and that. Do you know what I mean? They say women are the worst fighters. <laughs> Absolutely horrible. I don't know how she's not locked up. I've been headbutted by a woman, smashed in the face by a woman. I've opened up a cell hatch before now and got smashed in the face by another woman. Yeah, I think women are a bit dirty when it comes to fighting, aren't they? In Blackpool Central Police Station, a female has become aggressive and smashed a window in the main reception area. PC Becky Herbert is first to respond. She gets detained by a member of the public who she lashes out at, so I've got to get hold of her. And she's got, I'll, I'll say, a, a good punch. She got a good punch in. Which has, n has knocked me off balance. And not only has she hit me once, she's then hit me probably four times after that, which has knocked me out. I've ended up unconscious on the floor. And at that point, she's kicked me on the floor as well, which I was totally unaware of. It was more of a dent on my pride that it happened because she was a lot younger than I thought she was. Of all the people that I've dealt with, it's a 13-year-old girl that assaults me. Unbelievable. Hello, ambulance. Oh. Tell me exactly what's happened. I don't know. She just needs a call. She's dying. She's what, sorry? She's actually done shot coming out of her head. A 15 year old girl has been attacked. <laughs> Sue McGrath and Kieran Hill are immediately dispatched. When I first started, if you went to a stabbing, everybody knew about it. All the other crews, oh, such as bodies had a stab, oh, where was that? But now, it's becoming more common. <laughs> she isn't, she isn't. Immediately you think, all oh, right, it's going to be a serious job. You need to calm yourself down, are you with her now? Yeah. How old is she? 15. When did it happen? When did it happen? Right, you need to calm yourself. Listen, calm yourself down. Calm what? down. We're coming as quickly as we can. You need to calm down. Oh, no. Ambulance. We might. We're not. Yeah, what? There's a lot of shouting going on. Are we? Do we need the police? Excuse. I need to get out. It's my best mate. I know a friend came down the stairs before we went up and she nearly knocked us all flying and I can't go, I've got to get out, I've got to get out. That was the impression we got. We didn't realise it was her that had done it. Oh, what, what a lovely friend. She doesn't need any enemies, does she? Luke, it's still pissing yeah. out there. She's in about the way, though. All right, Amanda. What I think we'll do, sweetie, is pop you on the ambulance and we can clean you up properly, OK? Yeah, it is, um, All right, come on, chicken. I'll help you down, come on. Yeah, You're all right, sweet. Yeah, she had a horrendous amount of blood on her face, bless her. 
I feel the same. Whatever had been going on up there, it was horrendous. It's all right, see. That's a bit cold. I'm just pressing on, just to... It has almost stopped bleeding, OK. What um, did this happen, roughly? Just then. Just now. Me and my mate was having a drink. She's ended up getting a bit drunk, and I've ended up talking to this lad that she likes. I've ended up arguing, and we've ended up scuffling around on the floor, fighting, and then from nowhere I felt the heat on my face, and that's when I knew she stabbed me. What was it about? Over a lad. How long have you been friends with this girl? About ten years. I've met her when I was about six, and we've been mates ever since. We used to call each other cousins. Right, Amanda, we'll just bob you up to the Vic then and get that head sorted, OK? <laughs> Won't take us long. And so you're not friends with her now? Yeah, I'm friends with her now. <laughs> really? Yeah. How did that end up happening? Because it was a drunken mistake, wasn't it? We were both drunk. And I don't, I don't tend to hold grudges on people. So we made up after that. Do you think she realises how serious it is? No. No, she just thinks that it's all fun and games, that it's just because she wasn't badly... Well, she was badly injured, but she wasn't seriously injured, that it can all be forgot about and everything's going to be all right, where next time everything might not be all right. Yeah. Right, let's give her a proper clean-up because I can't see it at the moment. Right, oh, I think it's up top here. And um, what did she stab you with and where did it come from? It was a knife. She always used to carry them around with her. What, knives? Yeah, just in case something happened. What, like someone looked at a boy? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> she just sits it in a bag with all of her stuff. And how big a knife? I'd say about that big. That's just like the pointy bit, you know, the long bit, not the handle. That's the knife. So how long's the whole thing? Depends how big your handle is, about that big. For a handle. Pretty serious mm -hmm. weapon. It is. It's like different generations. I, I would not tolerate that and I wouldn't... I'd never be a friend again. But she's forgiven, forgot. But maybe next time she won't be here to forgive and forget. And that's what you worry about? Yeah. Not worried, I'm petrified of it. Girls are more worse now than boys. Really? Really. Especially around here. It's more girls crying than what there is, boys. It's an in thing. It's like having a mobile phone. You've got to have a knife in your bag. It, that's what it's like all the time. And like yesterday, one of our friends sadly got killed and food knife. And it, it's just, it's pathetic. It really is pathetic. I don't, I'd hate the day when somebody rings me and tells me that, like, Amanda or any of my other children have been found in the gutter. Do you fear that? Yeah, I do. You know, we're going out to people, these girls, that could easily... You can just pull it out on anybody then, can't they? If, they? if it's that acceptable, if it's that all right to carry a knife... I, oh, well, I'm shocked. That's horrendous. What do they think is going to happen? We're going to have to be even more careful then, aren't we? They're on about stab fests for us, and I can see that coming if that's... if that's what we're up against with young girls. These aren't hardened criminals, are they? Guys that are dealing drugs and what have you. These are young girls. Emergency. 380 North Promenade, please. 380 North Promenade, what's going on there? Uh, Katie Gesser just tried to stab me. I've got a knife here, I've got all my, my stab, wounds, stab wounds on me. You've just been stabbed? Yeah. Sue McGrath and Laura Dickinson are sent to meet the police at the flat where the male has been stabbed. How bad are your injuries? How bad are your injuries? Hello? 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 Me and Katie never had any problems 
we had the odd argument, everyone does. Um, but there's nothing ever that physical. But a couple of months before it happened, obviously the relationship just went downhill. Everything was an argument. She'd hit me with remote controls, glasses, everything, just to try to hurt me. But because I liked the girl a lot, I stayed with her. He's been stabbed with a kitchen knife. OK. Uh, it's about a four-inch blade. Oh, OK. She came to my house and she just picked her bag up, walked straight past me. And as she walked past me, she just swung a punch at me. Well, so, so I presumed it was a punch. I just looked down at the T-shirt and just started ripping it. As soon as I touched it, I just seen blood drip out of my T-shirt. Uh, I just literally looked down, at her, looked down at her arm and she's got a blade about this big. It's, the whole thing was just covered in blood. Right. What time did it happen, Luke? 15 minutes ago. It's only just... So it's just... Yeah, right. it's all just... It's just an assault, then, if somebody... Yeah. It was, was it your other half? Did no, just an ex-girlfriend. Right. She come back again with, a, with a, a second, second stab, and I just looked at her. I'm like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "Just get out of my apartment." And she said, "Right, I'm going to kill you." There was no fear in her eyes. It was just, "I'm going to kill you." Please, please, go away. I've been insulted by my common law wife. In recent years, the number of 999 calls from men who've been assaulted by their female partners has increased. Right, are you, are you both inside? Yeah, I'm in the bathroom locked in. OK, so you, have you been attacked by your wife? Yeah, I've got a blue leg. Right, right. did she use any weapons to hurt you? A walking stick. She hit you with a walking stick? Yeah. I don't know whether it's more on the increase or whether more um, men are speaking out about it now because, like, years ago, it just would, you'd just never hear of it, would you, really? I've stabbed him. You've stabbed him? Yeah, yeah. Real, please. Listen, we're coming as quickly as we can. All right. Just stay on the line. I need to run through some questions with you. All right, will you get me please, Joe, please? Okay. Is there any serious bleeding? Yeah. There is. Right. Is he completely alert? Yes, yeah, wait. Okay. Yeah, baby. Just keep reassuring him, all right. What part of his body's injured? Where, where exactly? Where have you stabbed him? Where is he stabbed? At the bottom of his back. In his back? Yeah. If they've not been stabbed and they're not going to need any medical attention, yeah, I think they'd be a bit ashamed, a lot of them, then they don't report it. Which is sad, really, because, you know, there's some sturdy birds out there. If they come at you, they're going to hurt you, aren't they? This is Luke. Um, been assaulted, stabbed with a kitchen knife. We've got one... I've not actually seen it. It's been dressed before we've got there, so we've got one... Shoulder and one forearm, which sort of ends up in this scrape going down here. I just think I was a, I was an easy victim for her, and took everything out of me. She got remanded and got charged with threats to kill, wounding with intent, and possession of a knife. And she got found guilty. She got to serve two years and 190 days on an indefinite sentence. Never heard the reason why it happened. And so it's always a bit back, always been a light back of my mind. Why? It's good. It's good to take time for me to trust someone properly. Letting into my house, share drinks, and it's yeah, it's it's not good. Go ahead. What's the emergency? We're just driving along Lytham Road. He ran out to the farmer's arms pub and started hitting our car. What's the problem there, please? My boyfriend's girlfriend just wanted to clean his face. I got pulled out of the way. Follow us the emergency. Yeah, we're breaking the entrance, please. It's a young lady. She's actually just put a brick through the window. She's drunk as a lord. I see both sides of women, actually, in, in 2012. I do see the bad side of it. You get more women going out drinking and fighting, and they don't really care about the repercussions anymore. I don't want to know these. But then I also see the career women. My sister's a deputy head. 
I am a police officer. Don't make me run after you. A lot of my colleagues, sergeants, inspectors, you know, chief cons, various police forces are women. Really, really strong role models. So you get that inspiration from women. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Keith, I'm going to have a listen to your chest, all right? I think we've got more options now than we've ever had, and those rules and boundaries and limitations have gone. I think the world's changed, doesn't it? And and we, we sort of fought for our right to vote, and we fought for equal rights, and I embrace it, I think, in a positive way, whereas maybe a lot of people don't. Ah! Oh, my God! I think I'd much prefer to live in this culture of equal rights. Yeah, you know. It is a shame that some women ruin it for us. But that's what we're there for. We're there to try and tackle it and deal with it. The competition heats up with a trip to the seaside. The Jewish mums split into pairs for the penultimate episode tomorrow at nine. Next tonight, the cream of the cro comedy crop, eight out of ten cats, coming up.